We've got a really cool ITL. We're going to break down something hot. Dave's going to tell you about that. We've got the big winner of the Shadow Hills gear we've been talking about for the last five weeks. It's a veritable giveaway. Pull up your seat, put your feet up. You've arrived at the place, Pensado's place. Hey, everybody. Glad to have you back. Good to see you. Had a good week. Um, uh, this past week was marred by incredibly uh, good health for a change. <laughs> it, it was marred by good health? Yeah. Marred is not necessarily a positive. Well, well see, one of, Marked things, by... one of the things you don't understand is, like, like a lot of people think you have to feel great to, to do great mixes, uh -huh. but, but you, when you feel too great, you want to go fishing. So there's a level at which you've got to be below that to do great mixes. And uh, too far low, you can't mix. Too far really. high, you... Like, 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 like Drew, you know, right. Drew likes to clock that's, HOs. That's in the eighth chapter of, really the, good. of the engineer's handbook, right? If you feel oh, too yeah. good, you go fishing. No, absolutely. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very good. Very good. I mean, Is that where you yeah. learned it? At the Bruce Levine Institute, yeah. Oh, cool. Right. <laughs> BSI? Yeah, BSI. <laughs> Got it. Oh, very cool. <laughs> I'm, 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 I graduated from there in the early 20s. Okay. Good I'm, I'm excited. Our guest today, Peter Reardon. Uh, I think Peter's the one that won the Shadow Hills giveaway, wasn't he? And well, he had some control over the giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Herb, uh, ITL is a little bit different this week. Um, well, let, can we get to that in a second? Absolutely. Can you explain it. Okay. So, real quickly, let's introduce our DJ. He's uh, not a DJ; he's a CJ. Drew Adams. What deal? Drew, what's, what's deal? happening? What's happening? Drew. Busy happening. week. You guys have been busy. Oh man, Drew week? knocked a couple of mixes out the box this week. All Good nighter. deal. Incredible. Good All deal. Uh, as usual, Dave is a little bit behind on his Facebook postings, but Will, you'll th you'll throw up the page, and so you guys know how to get in touch with us. Uh, there it is. It's up on the screen now. So Facebook, as you well know, hit us at our Twitter handle, and uh, you can watch us on our YouTube channel. For those of you who want to watch us live, you know to tune in to Justin TV at 12 noon on Thursdays. If not, again, catch us on our YouTube channel. We appreciate all the comments and stuff. Some really good things are happening there. As soon as you take that off the mark, they can't see it. So just so you know. There you go. Vanna White. Okay. I love these numbers. Anyways, back to me, Will. So, we want to also thank, obviously, our Vintage King partners. We always love them. Let's give a hand to Vintage King. Yay, Chevy. Cool. And actually, Chevy is who's here. In the, who's in the... You guys don't know Chevy. Who's what? Who's in the... Who from Shadow Hills is in the CEO? A new guy. Oh, yeah? Ryan McGuire is in the chat room. So, uh, there's Ryan's page. He's up on the... Look at Ryan cheesing. Cheese, Ryan. Okay, let, 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 hey guys, let's, let's don't be easy on Ryan. Let's make it hard. I want all you guys to ask Ryan, is it better to leave your gear on all the time or turn it off when you're done every night? So anyways, uh, <laughs> let's, let's uh, and, and as a reminder, we have got the big Shadow Hills giveaway. We're going to be announcing that later. There it is on camera. You see that wonderful piece of gear sanctioned by a lot of our guests. This is high-end stuff. This is incredible. And you're going to meet the man behind that. So... Let's uh, let's throw to um, ITL. Why don't you explain it and let's get yeah. to it? Yeah, uh, what I was um, what I was about to tell you about ITL is um, we departed a little bit from the format. Tell us how you like it. Um, <coughs> I decided to call Ariel. <coughs> excuse me. Ariel was our first guest on our first show, and I want you to go back and listen to that show because Ariel broke down. All the things he used, everything he did on Super Bass, the new Nicki Minaj hit that's just like taking the world over. I mean, this thing is like a huge, huge record. And not only did Ariel explain what he did, but we've got screenshots of all his plugins that he used. We, we go into why he did it. And I think you guys are going to find this really, really fascinating. Um, Will Thompson, our producer, uh, spent a lot of time organizing this for you because we got so much great information. But I, I, Pretty proud of this one, Herb. Let's run it. Let's run it. Hey guys, uh, welcome, welcome to another ITL. This is going to be a little bit different. Um, I was able to snag my friend uh, Ariel Shobaz. He's right in the middle of the new Nicki Minaj album, but he's really uh, been kind enough to give us a little bit of time. We're going to discuss the massive worldwide hit. When I say worldwide, I'm not exaggerating. That thing is like. I, know, I will talk to Ari, but I know it's, a, it's been top five forever worldwide, but 
Anyway, uh, Ariel's going to go through with us and uh, describe some of the things he did on Superbase. What's up, Ariel? Hey, Dave. How are you? Man? Uh, man, so I remember you and I were talking like a month ago, and you were like number three or four in the world. Did you did it, did you make it to number one in the world? I don't think we made it to number one, but we were that close, man. Uh, hopefully, on this next album, that's the goal. Uh, how's how's the new album sounding? I bet it's amazing. Incredible. Um, you know, we're, we're going uh, with, with more songs that are written. Um, and so we have some absolute smashes lined up uh, that JR produced. Dr. Luke is, is going to be heavily involved. So it's going to be a massive album. Wow. Um, don't, give any, don't give any secrets away, but some pretty cool uh, features. Yes, yes, some very cool features. Oh, man, I can't wait, can't wait. Well, let's jump right in, man. Um, uh, I remember you and I were talking about Super Bass um, a while back before it was a single, that was, that's always been my favorite song on the, on the first album. You, you put your foot in that thing. Was there any pressure in mixing a song called Super Bass? I mean, you kind of had, had, had to have Super Bass, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, that was, <laughs> you can't have it be called Super Bass and have no bass, for sure. And, and fortunately, you know, the way that song came together, um, it was produced by Kane Beats, and, and he had a lot of real heavy synths in there. And, that, and the song was actually written around the fact that it was so bass heavy to begin with. So it made my job a little easier, fortunately. Yeah, plus you, you, uh, all, uh, all of the songs that you mix and almost all the songs on the album, you track too, right? On the last album and on this new album that's about to come out, you, you tracked everything, right? Exactly, which, which really helped to keep the visions together that the producer, the writer, and, and Nikki and I had. Um, we were able to keep everything under the same, you know, roof basically because we're all in the same room recording, mixing, and then with the mastering process, we we're the same group of people there together too, and and we were able to really make sure our vision made it to the final product. Let's jump right in, man. On the kick, you 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 did some parallel stuff on the kick, right? Correct, correct. And, and I know you you stress uh, the parallel compression a lot. I don't think any of us can stress it enough how important it is um, to have parallel compression when you need it in your mixes. You like the, the 2500 API? Yeah, that, that was able, you know, because because what I tried to do with the parallel compression was really get the attack um, to jump through because it was a heavy, bass heavy track. We needed it to, to jump through the speakers. And so um, the, the, the Puig Tech, the, um, you know, when I EQ'd it, it's, it's really boosting the top end and pulling all the low end out of the kick, so it doesn't sound like much of a kick. You're attenuating a lot at 100. Yeah, I'm trying to just bring that top end out, and then the API, what I was able to do is, um, you know, you can even use the, the bass drum preset and tweak from there, and it gives you a really nice, sharp compression that, that allows it to pop really nicely out of the track. I love that. I love that compressor. And then on the claps, which are coming up now, um, you use Smack, which has always been one of my favorites. I noticed you in the side chain you're using a peak, and then um, yeah. uh, same thing. This this is the parallel chain, right? Exactly. Where the original claps were not touched, and then this would be the parallel compression that I used. And then um, you were telling me earlier that that you've probably changed music as we know it with these hi hats. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Like, guys, he was, he was saying, I didn't do much to the hi-hats, I had, you know, he's my yeah, guy. Yeah, a real simple yeah. you, um, you know, if you watch the first episode, you know, I talked about using plugins that were low latency and, and really good quality, um, and, and so I can't stress how, how great these MIG-DSP EQs are, and, um, you know, you can see it, it's a real simple EQ on the hi-hat, but again, it, it's super low latency with great results. Here again, the reason you had to do so little is because you recorded the original, so you did all the heavy lifting when you were tracking, so. Exactly. So, um, that's, that's an asset. Uh, bass, um, what's going on with the bass? I mean, it's, it's super bass, how'd you get it super? Well, to, um, you know, it's, it's the R bass, which I think a lot of people have access to, and it is a sub bass, and what I did is I added, rather, rather than trying to EQ it in, you know, I used the R bass to synthesize um, all the way down to 42 hertz, so you can see, um, you know, it, it's not mixed in barely, very heavily because it was a sub bass to begin with, but this exaggerated it and, and really pushed the subs 
um, and kind of underneath the cross point of where uh, normal speakers would crap out, but this would still hit the subs. So oh, that's good. That's good. So you, you were actually checking it periodically on, on smaller speakers, and then, of course, you work in the nicest studios yeah. in the world. You did this at, uh, over at Kit's place, right? Glenwood Place? Yeah, this was done at Glenwood, correct, in Studio C. Oh, see. And then um, something rather unique. Um, this looks like a... Um, this almost looks like somebody photoshopped this. Um, <laughs> on, on the sense, you, you went out of your way to, to get things wide. I mean, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different, uh, what's the word, Will? Instantiations? Is that the way you say it? Instances? Well, I'll take instances. <laughs> I like <laughs> instantiations, instances of uh, uh, S1. Uh, yeah, well, and to give credit where credit's due, Kane, Kane Beats, um, you know, used this on a couple tracks, and, and I really liked what it was doing, and so I kind of took his idea and ran with it, and it, as you can see, yeah, we used it on basically every single synth in the song, uh, and it's part of the reasons why it's so wide and has such a cool sound, and one of the, the cool things about these imagers is, rather than panning something from left to right and losing some of that image, you can actually turn down or turn up the left or right channel and adjust the width with this imager um, and, and really get some cool, unique sounds that you couldn't get just by panning and volume alone. And, and they're definitely worth trying out um, whenever you have something you want to widen. Man, it's, it just looks good. It just, it just looks good. It's, it's incredible that, that... I think you ought to turn that into a T-shirt or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the sound was really cool. And that's one of the things I'm most proud of on, on Super Bass is, is how wide it is. And, and I, I think the next photo we're going to pull up um, is probably just the most simple stereo widener you can imagine, which I use on the main ARP synth. It's the main sound you hear through the whole song. Uh, and that It really stands out. And part of the reason it stands out um, is because of the widening that I did. And, and this is something, it's a plugin everyone has. It's just a standard short delay. And Dave, I'm sure you use this all the time. I probably picked it up. I don't know you. if you I don't know if you remember, but like in '92, I invented this. Oh, see, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I didn't even you know plug in was in '92, but <laughs> you know what? Uh, I can't take credit for anything you do, man. You uh, you took you took what you got from me and just made it 100 percent your own. And 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 because you're so musical, everything you do is musical. Well, thank you. And it, this is one of those things that, that I think anybody watching has to try if they haven't done it before. It is taking that short delay. You know, you can see the settings. Probably saying that it's basically a zero delay on one side. You're not using any depth or any rate to add modulation to the sound. Strictly using it to delay the right side anywhere from 10 to 20 milliseconds from the left channel. And if it's a mono sound, it can work even better. Use a mono to stereo plug-in and just A, B bypassing it and just you can hear how wide it instantly makes it just by doing that simple little trick and it's one of my favorite things i use it all the time when i need anything to be wider yeah i, I agree it's a great trick okay now we're moving on to nikki's lead vocal mm -hmm. um and these are laid out in in the order that they came up in the session you know so you can see the chain and um you know i think you've talked about in the show before I usually do cuts before compression and boosts afterwards, and, and I completely agree with you. And, you know, I did some cuts on the EQ after the compression, but the main roll-off that I did was before the compression, so all that low-end information isn't triggering the compressor. Yeah, um, I, I love Arvox. Arvox doesn't get talked about a lot, but that's a great plug-in. It, it, it's not fancy, so I don't think people like to talk or even brag about it, but it's one of those go-to plugins for me, especially when, when I'm tracking, that gets the vocals right where I need them to be. Um, and surprisingly, they get used in post a lot. Uh, a lot of people don't know that I do do some post work. And um, the Coke Zero commercial for the Super Bowl last year, all the vocals were done using our Vox to get them right at the, the level we needed. And, it, you know, it works great for post and it works great for, you know, lead vocals. Um, you know, again, if, it, if it's recorded well, it works incredibly great. Yeah, of course, you recorded this vocal. Well, man, I'm just studying this. The, the, the vocal sounded so good. In a minute, we're going to talk about some of the effects on the vocal. 
Then I got, we've got, um, oop, nothing happened. Oh, there we go. That's the backgrounds. Yes, I have some backgrounds here. And again, fairly, fairly simple. You know, if you record a tape with a really good sound, it doesn't take that much to get it sounding great. And um, the, the background vocals were recorded by Aubrey Delane, well, otherwise goes by Big Juice. He did a great job recording the backgrounds, um, and he used the mic chain setup that I had. And I, I tweaked his, his presets a little bit, but you can see it's pretty basic because of, of the great sound we got. And again, we use a, a 1073 mic pre through tube tech CL1B compressor and, and just made sure that the live room was perfect every time. That was for tracking. I noticed you got a, a ratio of nine. Was that, was, that, was that what he gave you or, is, or did you choose that higher ratio for a reason? He had it set pretty damn high and I, and I kept it up there. Uh, you know, everything was tweaked a little bit, but that was one of those things because we, we compressed a tape so well that this was really to just catch those little peaks and, and you know, you have a trick also of, I think, going even higher. Yeah, I do 50. 50? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You get a great sound. Really I know. Sound. Especially with that plug-in, there's something about the attack and release on that plug-in that you can get so musical. Like, right. like it's, it's my go-to plug-in for um, side-chaining it, like dance music and stuff. I, I love that yeah. plug-in. So um, on, the, uh, on the bridge, you did some pretty unique things on the bridge of this song, if I recall. Yeah, for the, for the bridge, uh, you can see it's not a very, again, it's not a fancy EQ, but, um, you know, just some, some little tricks of cutting where the exact frequencies um, that were just kind of jumping through. And, you know, if you bypass it, it's, it's not changing the sound of the vocal too much because of how tight these cues are. But if you crank it in the club, it, it addressed the few frequencies that were coming through when she sings that were a bit harsh. And, and you know, you, you and I use a trick of, of sometimes uh, using a sidechain compressor to address that. And in this situation, it sounded better for me to do these really tight, thin cuts. And you can see I'm cutting by uh, 10 and 11 dB on, was it 1900 and 3100 hertz? Yeah. But the, they're such tight cues that it didn't, it didn't affect the presence of her voice, but addressed those frequencies. And so I guess what I'm saying is you don't be afraid to do cuts that drastic if you need it. And in this is one of those situations where I needed it. Yeah, you've got, you've got that perfect pitch thing going on. So you, I, 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 I would bet if we looked these up, these would be actual note values, the way your hearing works, you know? Exactly. Um, I can't wait to check these reverbs out. All right, this is a, a, real, a real simple, you know, one of the reverbs I used on the vocals. Um, we used a few, and I think I've talked about before, one of my favorites is TL Space. But, but this is actually, you know, my go-to reverb chain for, for just getting any song going. And, of course, you know, the pre-delay and, and the decay times all match the tempo of the song, which is something you taught me and, and is an incredible tool for, for having everything feel in sync. Um, and, and what's cool is with, with this, to get the expensive sound, I cut 10 dB at, at 1200 hertz. And what that does is it allows the reverb to flow without cluttering up the mix because, you know, the vocals sit really heavily. Yeah, you know, and so instead of duplicating more of that frequency, which takes up so much of the space, you pulled it out. Good job, man. Exactly. So However, I would have used, you used a 29.5 pre delay. I think I would have gone with a 29.4. But, but you know what? It wouldn't have been in time. <laughs> <laughs> and you would have heard it too. I know you would. <laughs> no, I couldn't. You would have been like, "Why is that off?" <laughs> you know what? Though this is a good time to take a minute and and um, several people like like Alex Akim, who's on the show, Phil Tan, um, um, Brian Kennedy, uh, and even uh, Greg Wells. People I respect so much. They all talk about the need to limit the, the tools you have. When you have too many tools, you, you don't use any of them very well. When you limit yourself to a handful of tools, you get the maximum usage out of them. Do you find that that, 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 that austerity is actually contributing to your creative process rather than having like, I, I know you have access to every plugin ever made, but, yeah. but, but the austerity, the, 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 the limiting yourself, um, like Mike Dean said the same thing too with Kanye. Is there's something about having 
just what you need and, and making that work and really working like like I can see you massage just about everything on this plug-in you know I mean it's not anything random there going on exactly exactly and, and I mean these are these are plug-ins you know they're they've been around forever and you know part of the reason I was so excited to talk about this mix was because they're they're plug-ins that everyone has access to you know of course yeah I mean you have access to so many really cool plugins as well as SSL consoles, million dollar studios that, that most people don't have access to. And these were one of those mixes where I really relied on the basics that I knew extremely well. I wasn't experimenting with anything that I, I didn't really know about. I just went to the go-to stuff I knew how to manipulate to get exactly what I wanted. Yeah, uh, that's, that's going to upset a few people because I remember when I first moved to LA and I, I, I really kind of sucked as an engineer. My most sad, disappointing day was when I realized there wasn't a magic piece of gear that everybody had that I didn't have back when I was in Atlanta. And I had to learn how to, how to actually engineer at that point in time. It was not a fun day for me. I hope we don't ruin too many people's days today. Um, the master bus, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what you did on that. It's, it's very subtle. But the, the linear phase EQ is, is one of those EQs that it, it eats up a ton of processing. But it, it's, it reminds me of the, the GML EQs and, and um, you know, just the phase alignment is so tight. You know, when, when you have a mix where you want it, the last thing you want is, is to boost something and have it be off time even slightly from the low end, which can make it not punch as hard. So stereo bus, I only use the linear phase EQ. This this is a very subtle boost, uh, you know, just to bring a little more presence to the mix. Very very subtle. Um, let, let me but, uh, let me interject here. Some of the some of the guys that aren't too experienced yet, a half a dB across a, an entire mix is completely different than a half a dB on a single kick drum. It's yes. It's like like three like like like. 3 dB on a kick drum is the same as a half a dB on the whole mix. When you're working across the whole mix, um, exactly. those numbers really translate differently, don't they? It really does. And, and yeah, half a dB doesn't seem like much, but, you know, boosting 1 dB was way too much. <laughs> it wasn't enough. I mean, it's really one of those things when, when you get that close to being finished with the mix, it, it's drastic how, how these subtle things make a difference. And, and you didn't put any compression, you just left that for mastering? I left that for mastering, yes. I, I do, when I am mixing, um, which, which is something that a lot of people watching can try doing at home, is, is usually when I'm about halfway through a mix, I'll actually put mastering plugins on my master bus. Um, so I'm kind of mixing into my mastering suite. Then when it goes to mastering, I remove all those plugins, but I'm mixing knowing I'm mixing into the mastering suite, so I know what it's going to sound like when they touch it. And of course, they can do a better job than I do, but at least I'm, I'm able to mix with that in mind, which is pretty cool. All right, I, I'm, 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 I apologize. I, I, I wanted to talk about the delays, and I think I skipped over them. Can, can we go back to the uh, 16th note delay that you put on Nikki? Yeah, this is this is one of the delays, and. Um, you know, it's, it's, again, this is in the order that they were, uh, you know, on, on the auxiliary track. And you can see, you know, the, the frequency is being automated on the filter. The, um, also the reverb, which is D-verb, which, again, it's one of those cheap plugins all of us have, and it, it works great on certain things. I, I love it on snares. Yeah, you know what D-verb stands for, right? <laughs> Dylan verb. Dylan verb. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yes, him and Will I Am love Deverb. <laughs> you <even> said that, <laughs> but they do love Deverb, and it works great for certain things. And, and you know, for delay returns, I love it. And you know, this was one of those things where you can mess around with with uh, Echo Boy or Echo Farm or any of those, and, and you can get really cool stuff. But I knew exactly what I wanted. And yeah, I know. I know you 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 were trying to emulate like an old tape analog reverb by rolling everything uh, below 4K off. I mean. Exactly, exactly. And, and by automating that, it gave the delays a little bit more texture where as the delays would go on, it would slowly filter down. And as well with the... Uh, with repeat the re that, repeat that. That's cool. I like... I repeat that. That's neat. So, but, so, so you took the time as, as the delay, as like, bah, as that decayed, you would, you would take more high end off. Yes, so it's it's constantly rolling off the high end for each delay. Oh hit. man, that's that's my idea now. 
<laughs> yes, as well, it, as, it, well wait, as adding wait, reverb. The mix wait of the for reverb. my sound on the sound article where I claim I did that. Perfect. <laughs> man, that's a great idea. I love it. I love it. Well, man, um, I, I, I'd love to talk to you some more, but you've given me so many new ideas. I feel I, I, like I want to go start a mix right now. So uh, <laughs> right. congratulations on the platinum record above your uh, left shoulder there. You, you, yeah. really des you, you really earned and deserved... Uh, that record, man, you, you, you really, you really uh, helped Nikki get a record that she can be totally proud of and totally represents her in every way, you know? I mean, that was a, I don't know if there's been a, a, a record that highly anticipated since the Snoop album, you know? That had to be a lot of pressure for both of you guys, and you guys came through like crazy. Ton of pressure and, and you know we, we've broken several records worldwide for a female rap artist and you know the next album we're starting now is going to be even bigger man so. i hope so all right you know i love you man good luck and i can't wait to hear that i can't wait to hear um the new record will you will you let us know when it when it hits the stores of course of course you'll get the sneak peek <laughs> all right man uh thank you again Ariel, and i'll talk to you soon sounds great thanks dave Okay, guys, man, what a blast hanging out with Ariel. I'm, uh, uh, I'm amazed with what he's been doing. Listen, uh, Ariel reminded me that um, go back and check out episode one because a lot of the things he gave you the details on what he did on episode one, he, he goes into a little depth on why he did certain things. So check out our very first episode, Ariel, the very first show we ever did was our first guest. And I hope you guys had as much fun as I had. I, I, I can't wait to get, get, uh, get started on the mix I'm working on today. I'm going to rip off Ariel on a couple of these ideas. So anyway, uh, let us know what you think and uh, keep those cards and letters coming. Back to you, Dave. Told you. Told you, huh? Uh, <laughs> you want 8,000 ways to EQ a kick drum? You got it just then. Man, the... The, the the Waves S1 Imager, that page just blows my mind. we got to make a T-shirt of that. I mean, that was just the coolest thing I ever saw. And it, but it points out, guys, that um, sometimes it's better to restrict the amount of things that you have and learn the nuances of each thing that you use. And, like, like I never thought to, 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 to do some of the things with the S1 Imager that that uh, Aria was doing. And then... And then um, Ariel mentioned parallel compression. Um, my good buddy Bob Power um, is the first person that that I that I realized was using parallel compression. And then my great friend uh, John Marie Horvat uh, actually came to my control room and actually showed me how to do it like a hundred years ago. But we'll do more on that later. We've done several shows on that. But man, guys, I want I want you to know that that. that um, we're going to be talking to um, a rocket scientist, a record company owner, an incredible engineer who's worked on several of the records that you guys bought millions of, and he, he happens to be the guy behind Shadow Hills. I mean, he's, uh, he's busy. <laughs> yeah, but I, I want you guys to understand that when we try and figure out how his mind works, you need to pay attention because this man is like, He's like the Renaissance man. He's the Leonardo da Vinci of our industry right now. There's there's a handful of guys, uh, Durr, Dave Durr, uh, Dave Hill, Peter Reardon. These guys don't just make equipment. It's their lifestyle. It's 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 no holds barred. It's it's if if they can save a thousand dollars to to but the equipment gets to be one thousandth of a trillionth of percent not as good. No, pro no problem, they're going to spend $1,000. These guys are no holes barred guys. So I'm really excited to introduce Peter to you. Peter, thank you so much for being, being here with us today, man. Well, thank you very much. After that introduction, I'm sure everything will be You're downhill wonderful. from here. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. It'll be no, quite you know, deflating, but uh, you yes, know, it's wonderful like, to be here. <coughs> I can't it's believe like, you missed that, that one other credit, though. What? His movie credits. What? 
You know, he was Clark Kent. better be funny. <laughs> Clark Kent. Well, he turns into maybe. Superman. You know, Clark Kent. Uh, well, yeah, that's a good one. That was funny. That was you, funny. Thank you, Dave. Thanks At the expense of the guest, but that was funny. D Peter's a good guy. We just, a we've been guy. spending time bonding. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But thank you for coming. Well, Peter, thank man, you. I mean, um, I want our audience to know, I mean, one of the great, great, great hip-hop songs of all time, you did that album, Gangster's Paradise for Coolio, who's, who's a, a, a really good friend of mine. That's one of my favorite records of Coolio. And then uh, a lot of people forget, so I need to remind them that I am the voice of hip-hop. I mean, you know that. Clearly. Clearly. That Clearly. I, I, you know, I speak for everything hip-hop. You just got out of prison this morning. Did you, didn't you just do a bid? Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool, yeah. Cool. Cool. Had had to remember because you know my lifestyle is so varied and right. stuff. Well, I'm glad you made it. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, uh, um, Scarface is just one of my favorite people, one of my favorite rappers, and and Peter worked with Scarface, Ghetto Boys. Um, he he was he's, he was a rocket scientist over at Johnson Space Center in in Texas, and then um, he formed a partnership with. Uh, Matt Dyke from the Dust Brothers, um, who, who, who are some favorites of mine, and, 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 and during that collaboration, he worked on, on the cult, Bare Naked Ladies, the cult, Herb, Bare Naked Ladies, Insane Clown Posse, ODB, Clawfinger, and then uh, had his own record company at Electra that was very successful. So uh, I can't wait to delve in and see how his mind works and, and, and get some engineering tips for you guys. Um, Peter, uh, I always tell my friends, wear one hat and to be successful, focus on one thing, and when you master that one thing, you've simultaneously mastered everything. It seems like, it seems to me like you've just shot a hole in my theory. I mean, you've mastered five things, and in the process, mastered five things. It, it, it seems the antithesis of how nature should work. Well, I don't. Was know. that a question? Herb? I don't know if it was or not. I'm prayerful that it was. I don't know about mastery, but you know, I really believe you have to take every shot because you know, because it happens, you have opportunities. There's no guarantee it'll happen again, so you've got to uh, you've got to do your best everything you do. So what I tried to do was just uh, express myself creatively and uh, do it uh, with high concept ideas, mm -hmm. and I think when we're talking about vision or whether things are degrees of success or failure, I think really the failure is failure of vision. Mm -hmm. It's not whether you succeeded or it turned out the, to your expectations, but did you reach far enough? Mm -hmm. That's very important. Mm -hmm. I've been accused of checking all the boxes. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, we don't know how many breaths we have, and so... Uh, there's only so many large decisions that you can make that can be undone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, just it. make sure that what you do is, my advice, uh, is, is you being authentic. That's essential. Mm -hmm. And I have to clear up, uh, when I worked at NASA, I wasn't a rocket scientist. It was just... It I sounds was, better. Huh? I was, uh, it was out of recording college. Um, it was a different application of being able to do recording. It was more like I Love Lucy with the conveyor belt rolling off. And Houston, where I'm from, at the Johnson Space Center, that's where all the mission audio was recorded. So, mm. wow, that's been fascinating. Uh, fascinating. That's fascinating. Good. Yes. Uh, high concept ideas. I like that phrase. What does that mean? Well, it means that. Uh, well, for instance, if if you're going to have a, uh, uh, an event take place, uh, you know, it could be very pedestrian, mundane. Instead, it should be an archetype, something that exists unto itself. And so um, I've been accused of the style of our equipment, borrowing it from somewhere else. Well, of course. But I think having it live in a way that has always been in our periphery, in our memory, but maybe our memory is a few things mushed together. And so uh, Shadow Hills Industries is, is that. It's, it's the fully realized version of that. But When I first started engineering, um, I made a few pieces of my own gear too. Not because I uh, could, but because I had to. It was either make it or don't have it. So, um, yes. was 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 Shadow Hills born out of a frustration for 
not having the tools you wanted as a as a really good engineer, or was it born out of uh, poverty, or uh, or uh, how, what was the inspiration? Because you were cruising along as a very successful engineer, and I know that Shadow Hills, the amount of time you must put into this is is put a dent in your engineering uh, time. Yes, as far as engineering, unfortunately, I'm retired. That's sort of the irony of being involved in this for the purpose of making better things for mm -hmm. us all. But hopefully other people benefit from that. And well, to me, that's, that's just as good, mm -hmm. that, that in some way I'm contributing to other people. But did you sit down with like a fair child and go, oh, that's a piece of junk, I can beat this? Well, no. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> I think so, somebody who said that to a fair child, well, they're, they're mistaken and they're uh, not applying their efforts in the right direction, for sure. But poverty, I think, is the right word. Just poverty from my experience of what was available for the things I was trying to do. Um, and so specifically, I'd been making these mastering consoles. And I'd take them every time I'd go do a mixing gig. I'd bring my own that I'd rolled. And it looked just like that for some reason. That's just always been sort of a constant. Uh, but it sounded real good. And I never was able to take one home. And what started... Uh, I don't understand. You know, they were yours. They were mine, but however, whoever I was working with, they said they... Oh, they kept them. They kept them, and so oh. I had to make more. And so after a while, there had been nine. Wow. Uh, and then at Vintage King, uh, Jeff Ehrenberg informed me that he was doing a mic shootout, and, and as a courtesy, could I let him borrow one for the shootout? And I said, well, of course, yeah. Of course. How long ago was this? This was in 2003. Oh. And he sold it. So, <laughs> <laughs> ding. <laughs> yes, and, that's great. And and but Jeff and I became very good friends. And he said, uh, "I'm thinking about Mike Priest. Would you be interested in building some?" And I said, "Well, not really. There are so many Mike Priest. Why why do we need more? There are so many great mm -hmm. choices that I'm very mm -hmm. content." Mm -hmm. And he said, "Well, if you did, what would you do?" And so off the top of my head, I said, "Well, I guess I would have uh, switchable output transformers, just sort of on the spot and." And I heard those words come from my mouth, and I said, well, I guess, you know, give me a little bit of time, and I'll see what I can do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's been a constant in everything that we've done since, mm -hmm. you know, just sort of those, you know, gut intuitive things, because they're true. They're things that, uh, uh, when I was busy with my engineering and producing career, were, were things I wished I'd had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To be able to, in place, hear real differences without being fooled by differences in level or patching in the time. Yeah. Going away. It's important. The, the level thing. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of angry with that right now. Yeah. Yes. Every piece of gear I bypass, it gets softer. You know, it's mm. like you put it in louder or something. Your mastering compressor is like, I mean, that's like, that's like an industry standard now. I mean, it, I, I think, it, I think I, during my research, I think of the thousands of mastering facilities, I think there's only three in the entire world that don't use one. Mm. Well, you know, you can't plan for those things to happen. And I think millions of dollars couldn't buy that marketing. Uh, and again, I made it as a high concept idea, and it's fully realized, and I didn't stop until I was satisfied. And that was long after many others were. So I'm very pleased with it, and I'm, I'm very happy that other people find it useful, because it's, well, it's exactly to my taste. Right. A lot of people with your intellect and with your when, and with your gifts in terms of of the technical side um, have a reputation for not having artist uh, an artistic component. You know the old thing I say on the show all the time: just because you can type a hundred words a minute doesn't mean you're going to write a great novel. Just because you can uh, figure out a time constant circuit doesn't mean you're going to make a great compressor. How 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 would you describe your passion to 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 put art into 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 these pieces of gear? Um, I mean, uh, your stuff just has a I don't know. If Picasso was a technical guy, that this is what he'd make. I mean, uh, how, how did you get to that point to where you 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 you, you was it your engineering experience that allowed you to? to draw on, on what, it, what it should sound like because a lot of people design gear and they seem like they never really took into account what it should sound like. Well, that's very kind. Uh, I don't know if all that's appropriate, but uh, I can say that, uh, you know, the technician always destroys the artist. Oh, and wow. that, that is just a shortcut to ground where you're going to get nowhere. 
and as a craftsman and as a technician, when you're making records or when you're making gear, you focus on things that don't make the big differences. Mm. And, and, you know, before you know it, uh, you have to hurry up and, and do your job and uh, uh, get your work done with the time you have left. And it doesn't come out how you had planned. So, but focusing on the things that really make a difference, that's from experience being an engineer mm -hmm. and, uh, and listening critically and, you know, mixing songs, listening to them thousands of times, perceiving minute dif differences. Uh, well, there, there are things that are more important than others, mm -hmm. and those are the things you should focus on first. Because time and money always expands the amount available, so you might as well just do the important things first. What, um, you've got a unique perspective to answer this, but where do you see, and, and I, I, don't wanna, I, don't, I don't want this question to be too broad, Man, I'm turning into Barbara Walters today or something. I don't know what's going on with me. Uh, <clears throat> do you feel more like a tree today? If so, what kind of tree do you feel? Like? But um, how, how do you see the, 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 the future of our business? Like, there's, there's a lot of manufacturers that are, that are creating a lot of really good stuff, but there's only like a handful that are creating incredible stuff, um, and they're doing it in a world that's... That, that seems to be more and more digital oriented. How do you see the marriage of these two concepts in the future and, and, and how are you going to position Shadow Hills to, to be at the forefront of that? Is that a fair question or is that one you want to skip? Oh, certainly. I think the, another issue is sort of with the democratization of tools, with software, most people have the ability to express themselves. When you and I grew up making records, you mm -hmm. know, it was quite expensive for Absolutely. you to express one idea. Uh, so that's a good thing. Great. The problem is that there's a lack of constraints, and the constraints are engines for creativity and inspiration. Uh, so what happens is now we're spoiled. Everyone is. I mean, I am. Mm -hmm. It's that the functionality always wins over quality. And, but as craftsmen, it's impossible to accept that. Mm -hmm. You know, so what I've always tried to do is have... Uh, the functions present, that at least it's going to give you everything that you would get under another circumstance. But under the hood, even at great expense, even at the detriment of making it much harder to make, mm. having it be exceptional sound quality, because that's the number one thing that has to overrule all the other judgments. Dave Hill is, is someone I have equal respect for, uh, has ventured over into the, the digital world. Do you see Shadow Hill heading over there? Uh, anytime soon? Well, I would just say that as far as any products, if it's creative and there's a place where we could do something different, it's not impossible. Cool. Tell me about the Oculus uh, monitor control. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm excited to hear about that. Is it out now? It is going to be out soon. And okay. so, you know. The, yeah, you guys take a look at that. Uh, I think you'd be very interested in that. Uh, the Oculus is a monitor controller that is remote, so it has all the features of my old mastering consoles, and it sounds very good. But it also has all of the features of every pro studio environment as far as the monitor section, including, including surrounding everything else. Uh, but sound, it's going to beat all of your big consoles. It's going to beat them. Wow. And it's, uh, it's wireless. So there's a base station, uh, and all of the features are present there, too. But the pendant, the remote, um, you know, my hope is that it will be on top of your desk, and it will be next to GarageBand. Uh, that it's something that, uh, you know, it's, it's such an important key link to be able to hear what's actually occurring. And I, I, you know, I'd be honored to check it out. I mean, I, right now I use uh, Dave Hill's unit, and I, I really love it, but you've... Um, You've just really, uh, mm, I'd definitely love to check that out. Well, That's I'll say incredible. this, Dave's unit is just wonderful. I have I'm a great sexual thing. moment over here, Herb. <laughs> Your relationship with Shadow Hills is quite intimate, and I understand why. This is, this is sexy stuff. I, yeah. I've got a great respect for the, for the Avocet. It's brilliant, and I highly yeah. recommend it. This one is going to have just a different point of view. Right, I Ooh, understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in turn, like, 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 uh, 
When I think Shadow Hills, I think like the ultimate compressors, uh, just just artistic units. Um, when you pull up a mix, and uh, what 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 what. What what do you think? Uh, uh, I have, I'm having trouble phrasing this because um, I want to be respectful. But like when I when I'm invent when I made my first gate, I, I put on everything whether it needed it or not, just because I made a gate. I was so Ooh. proud of myself. And of course, I ruined a lot of mixes. But when when like 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 say for example uh, the Van de Graaff or some some of the other pieces of gear, the, the mastering compressor, or or this little bad boy here. Um, what 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 do you personally find that you use them the most on and this is in no way saying that that's all they're good for I just kind of curious how you use it yes well you know the, the trouble is it's uh, you know you turn the knobs and it could be quite exciting mm -hmm. and you have to re resist the temptation of um, you know making something that is uh, exciting at that moment but will not redound to your song mm -hmm. um, so I think I think as a bus compressor, it's it's really wonderful, and that's how it's designed. But I didn't stop there because, I, and maybe it's overkill. But you know, for drum bus compression, mm -hmm. hitting it hard is very very exciting. In so, the digital world, it's critical. I mean, because yeah. you hit the digital world hard, and it's not so exciting. Yes, yes. Well, I think that's an important thing too in our technological alienated age mm -hmm. with mouse clicks and screen redraws that you know this is the opposite of that mm -hmm. rather than one rack space it's five rack space and 70 pounds in tactile when you <laughs> when you turn the knob 70 pounds in tactile that yes. sounds like a blues song i heard somewhere yeah she's 70 pounds in tactile yes but that's important because it's 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 something that's completely lacking in, in the rest of our experience. Sorry, Herb. <laughs> <laughs> it's also something that a lot of young guys have never experienced. Right. Because mm -hmm. they just... Yeah, like I said, they, they 70 pounds it. in tactile. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, never mind. Because, <laughs> again, um, Drew will tell you that your relationship with this and the knobs and the tactile sense of the knobs has been something that you've been... Well, I mean, I, I, this is great I, stuff. I'm this manly is. enough to say, and I, no pun intended there, I mean, we're talking two different companies, but uh, that I, I'm a touchy-feely person. And this is good. So one of the things, Peter, that as we've been chatting, and because I can see the, the chat room monitor, um, I'm, I love Call of Duty. So I'm a, I'm a gamer that way, just because then I don't have to think about Dave, and I just shoot things. And <laughs> Whoa, where'd that <laughs> Dave, come from? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but their whole ethos in terms of the way they do it is, is almost, you know, it's World War One. it's film stuff. So when you go to the Shadow Hills website, and I'm noticing people in the chat room are saying, go to this, go to his website and go to, you have some really cool, what was, the, what was the concept behind you having a website that was such a deep dive and immersive? Well, uh... You know, it, it's very decadent, and uh, for those who are frustrated by it, you know, I, I apologize. Uh, but the idea is that we have an excellent distributor with a fantastic commerce site, and, uh, you know, what if we didn't have to communicate any business? Yeah. So, well, I didn't. Uh, and I'll give everyone a hint. Uh, don't use your keypad on the right for your numbers. Use them across the top, and you'll get into all of those codes. Yeah. And also, I put lots of secrets in there, because mm -hmm. why not? I couldn't it's come off of it. I went to it and went, I'm not going to do this. Well, let me put in one I code. know I did the and same And before thing. I knew it, I was in it. It was like two hours later, I was going, I, I don't even use gear. And I'm in here. It was, it well, was really cool. Heard. Come on now, Twizzle Flanger. Well, no, the Twizzle Flanger, but that's exclusive. That's, that's exclusive. In fact, I, I heard Shadow Hills, uh, I heard you have like a lawsuit against Shadow Hills for <laughs> pinching some of the concepts behind the Twizzle Flanger. I try to copy the best. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you some secrets for the website. Uh, you can download all the manuals at the end of the videos. You click, and there's a secret radio in the drawer of the manuals. So, And also, if you, on the map of the distributors, to explaining where, what country you can buy things, if you touch the lamp's cord, I'll just say, there's more, but that's oh, just the, man. That's the taste. I'm going there in about 20 minutes. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> you got to warm your arm up, because... Uh, oh. Batter's box. Can't be time. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's put Peter oh, in the batter's you, box. Oh, uh, well, man. We've got a veteran uh, ready to jump right in. Absolutely. Why not? Vocals. Well, vocals are the most important instrument. So I like uh, SM7 and U47 together.
That's great. I like that. Um, remind me to ask you about phase problems later. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> snare drum. Snare drum 57. Me too. Yeah. Uh, acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitar, AKG 451s, stereo. 10 dB. Yeah. Backgrounds. Backgrounds, web core. Ooh. Something new. Always, right? always wins the web core. Wow. Uh, acoustic pianos. Acoustic pianos, U47 and mono. U47 and what? Mono. Oh. Yes, guy doesn't have really long arms. <laughs> <laughs> um, pads, like, or road sounds, or synthesizer pad sounds? Yes, well, again... Only to try and stump you, that's all I'm throwing yes, in. Uh, through the Supro and then the DI box. Wow. I'm just telling you, you wow. got to try it. See, that little seven-inch speaker can reproduce what you can do at home, and it's just really fantastic presence in your mix. Guys, look that up. Look that up, because that's, that's, a, that's a serious piece of information I want you to have in your belt. Uh, acoustic bass, real bass. Electric bass, I mean, excuse me. Electric bass, you know, my favorite is a Beetle Cabinet and DI box. Wow. Run parallel, right? Yes, run so. parallel. And I'm not talking about the mics, because the cabinet's going to make a lot more difference. You can put what you want on there. I got gotcha. you. Um, the the room mics for for a drum kit, the ambient mics. Oh well, there's a series. So uh, coals, you coals, know, eight yeah. feet from the kick drum. You know, the pair of um, uh, of U eighty sevens. You know, around your drummer and uh, four fifty ones on top for your cymbals. Four fourteen behind the drummer's ear, and then a U forty seven behind the coals. And you want to keep the head on. I'm gonna stop you here, man. I'm, a, I'm, I'm pulling, I'm pulling rank. How do you keep all that stuff in phase? I mean, you have to walk, you have to like have the the assistant move it while you're listening. Well, you know, a lot of those things are uh, there are special effects. Uh, so, um, you know, I find that that rhythm mic is in the 451s are most of my sound, and then the rest is just changing my mix. A la kind of uh, John Bonham kind of vibe. Well, that's usually what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And uh, finally, uh, uh, electric guitar. Oh, 441. Can I, can I, uh, would you be comfortable if I, if I sped you through these again and you just gave me your favorite compressor? Well, sure. And, yes. and, and you can't use any Shadow Hill stuff. All right. <laughs> vocal. Uh, vocal for rock vocal dynamite. And, uh, uh, well, I got a chain. I don't steal thing. So it's a 1176, mm -hmm. and then a dynamite or a 163 DBX. Snare. Snare. Uh, a DBX 160. The. Uh, oh, man, I'm gonna stop you again. 163, the one knob that's just that's says right. more. Yes, I I'm, love that. I'm thing telling you, around. that is for the in-your-face radio I male know. vocal. Well, that's it. I know. I can't remember if it was Chris or his brother, but. I, I, I hope I'm right, but I remember seeing that in one of their racks over when we were working over at Encore, and I'm like, what are you using that little $100 compressor? You go, dude, this is the best compressor ever. Mm. Take it. Mm. And I still got it. It yeah. is an incredible, it's an incredible little compressor for rap. And well, people get hung up on things, okay, what's well, RCA ends, you know, it's not compatible with my mm -hmm. setup. Well, you know, the real problem is the question. What are you doing? Are, mm -hmm. are you trying to get a medal for being balanced? Mm -hmm. Just use your ears. <laughs> yeah. You know what's weird about that compressor, and uh, we're, we're through a batter's box, uh, but uh, Ariel mentioned on, on, on Into the Lair, uh, I have a preset that I like on the Renaissance compressor, Waves, where I, mm -hmm. I take the uh, ratio and put it at 50. And, and in my mind, I'm trying to emulate that little 163 dBx compressor that just has one knob or it just has more. Wow. It's, it's the greatest thing ever. Yes. Hey. Why don't we give this thing away? Nah, what do you think? Nah. No, let's keep, let's keep it for another week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, we... Uh, I think no. we should give it away. I think so. And first of all, we want to thank you so much for being supportive. Yeah, I learned us, so much. And Well, but also just being so supportive and giving us a, an opportunity to to give to our oh, audience absolutely. a great, great, great piece of gear. You can't, we can't tell you how many of our guests have said, oh my God, it's such an incredible, great piece of gear. So it, it, we're, we're honored it's, that you give us It, it Thank is you. the proverbial black box that separates 
their skills Absolutely. from the big boys' skills. So, I mean, if there ever was one, this is it. So, um, I know your rhythm challenge, but I need a drum roll. I'll do it for you, man. I, I, so, so, you want to announce the winner? I, I, I think you crossed the color line there. I'm, I'm Latin. I'm Spanish. Well, hit me then. Do something. We invented. Do, do merengue. I'll announce it to a merengue. <laughs> I mean, uh, Ricky boop, Martin. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, do I, I have right. to say anything else? Not, not much. Okay. And you might not want to go any farther. Jennifer Lopez. Something. Oh, there you go. Got you. So, our winner of this incredible Shadow Hills mono optograph is. Dun, 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 dun. Carmen Cacerio. Let's. Look at Carmen. Carmen's pictures up there on the screen, and that's Carmen's a little it. young there. Yes, and you, what you didn't know is that we have another giveaway. What? Well, Peter has been secretly in contact with our staff, and through a bunch of high-level transcriptions that's gone over the last five weeks, Peter has something to give. Well, Dave, it'd be my great pleasure if you would accept this uh, special mono optograph, but it the. The handle's a little different. It says the Pensado edition, so... I, uh, I'm gonna cry. There you go. That's cool yours, brother. I appreciate Holy it. cow. How cool is that? Look at that, Herb. Uh, incredible. Show it says, it has too. my name on it, guys. Yeah. Right down here. That's incredible, man. It's good to be the king. Yeah. <laughs> you if you have... So let me, let, me, let me set that up so we can show a close-up no. to the guys. <laughs> okay, cool. Then I'll put my face here. Yeah, me and me and Greg Wells. How cool is that? So we can put a. There we go. Look down here; it has my name on it. Peter, thank you so well, much. Sure, sure. We well, didn't have to do that, my friend. Thank you so thank much. You. Thanks to Chevy and the guys at Vintage King. This has just been really great. Here's the ultimate question, maybe one of them: Will you come back? Because if you won't, I'm coming to Austin to come in the room and hang with you. This has been so enlightening. Well, I'd be honored, and also it'd be wonderful to have you. Oh, Thank we'd you. be glad to. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Been really cool, huh? Yeah. How's that? Don't I'm cry. speechless. <laughs> I, I mean, if you tear up. I mean, damn. No, 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 don't do that. Tear up. Man, that's incredible. <laughs> well, listen, guys, we, we're going to get out of here a second. I want to just do a really quick shout out um and maybe we'll do this in a future show i had a very interesting conversation with an engineer about credits and how important they are we won't do that now but a quick shout out to uh blim star music at the sr studios in montego bay in jamaica um we had we i tried to enlighten him on credits and how to approach that we'll we'll deal with that later um again thanks so much to peter reardon at shadow hills our vintage king buddies what a great hour incredible uh, Oh, let me leave you with this, guys. There's a lot of things uh, that we pack in really quickly, and I want you to get the maximum usage out of these shows. Uh, just something as simple as, as, as Peter mentioning Cole's microphones. That might be a microphone you're not that familiar with, but, but uh, I can't remember if it was Eric or, or somebody else mentioned that microphone for overheads or, or some of the little nuances that... Uh, that, that, that we went over today, some of the stuff in Ariel's segment. Um, don't, don't expect to be spoon-fed. Do a little research. When, when they say something that sounds a little out of the ordinary, Google it. Trace those threads all the way through and, 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 and get the skills that, uh, and the inspiration from these shows that can take you up another notch. It's, it's, it's an always ongoing process and it's um, if it's, if you want to be in this profession, it's, it's something that's fun to do, and uh, so 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 there's so much information. I I go back and listen to the episodes because I learn something from every episode myself. So anyway, thanks for being with us. It was it was a fun week. I can't wait to get home and use this. This is this is the coolest thing that's happened to me in in, in a long time. I really 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 can't thank you enough, Peter. And um, well, thank you'll, you. Dave. You'll see it in my rack when when we do the next ITL. See you guys next week.